Now I couldn't find any place in these instructions that say to put in these last four capacitors. But they do go in. And we have to place all four of them. These aren't polarized. So it doesn't matter how they go in. It just matters where they go in. But they all go right along this edge. So let's get these four in. Okay, I'm going to solder them four. Be right back. Now we've got these two six pin sockets. These hold the Ethernet connector. Go right over here. So. I'll get those soldered and be right back. Now the sockets here for your wires go in. You got 16 places down here to solder in. These little sockets have a T-bar right at the top. You want to put that at the top, you can see the little squares in here. So they just go in like that and solder them down. Be right back. Alright, there's all 16 of those. Now we're going to put the regulator in. This is the one we put the nut and the bolt on. So let's take those back off. Now it fits right over here and the metal side of it has to go down. Don't get it in backwards because uh, it's kind of a L shaped here and you want the flat side down against the board. So they, it goes in the holes And then we bend it back till we get the nut and bolt lined up. Now we'll put the nut and bolt in. I'll have to get my pliers to tighten that. But now we're going to solder the three connections. So I'll get that tightened up, get those three connections soldered. Be right back. Okay, that's in. And now we're going to put in this 5 volt converter. It goes in with the side here that has a little tag on it facing out. If you have to move the little capacitor, just bend them over a touch. Drop it in the holes. And now these two large terminal connectors, they go in at the bottom. And you want them to match the outline, so... The opening should be at the bottom. So we'll put those two in. Now that's where we stop at the moment. And we want to get our magnifying glass and look it all over. The only place where you could have a solder bridge that wouldn't matter would be on these fuse holders because the top two are the same wire, the bottom two are the same wire. So if they get connected in there in between those, that's not going to hurt a thing. So look it all over real good. Make sure that you have no solder bridges anywhere and that all the connections look good. And then we'll move on from there. 
all right if you're satisfied that all your solder joints look good that uh, they're all attached well they don't have any bridges then you move on this is where you add your so your uh, fuses excuse me this smoke colored gray one goes all the way in the right hand side the rest of them all just fill up the rest of the slots and there's all the fuses extra fuse put it over at the side now these jumpers here they want us to in case we need them later put them on here for storage so we're not going to connect the two we're just going to stick one leg on the bottom one like that the top one is still open that way they're just stored there Let's get four of them on. Try not to lose them. <laughs> They're small. four they're on there just for storage now the the bottom two over here you connect together out of these three you connect the bottom two together up here on the power select jumpers we're going to connect one and two and three and four we don't connect five And that's it for those the only thing that we still have that we need to solder will be six of these ICs the big one the four uh, smaller ones and the littlest one those those six all still have to be soldered the last one I put together it gave me a socket for that one to plug into I had to solder the four here and the little one there but this one had a socket this time I didn't get one so they swap back and forth on these on what kind of parts you get so at this point uh, this is where this is where we'll be testing it so we'll be putting a 5 volt or a 12 volt power supply on here because I'm going to be running 12 volt. That's why I've got it connected the way I do. Your jumpers might be different if you're using 5 volts instead of 12. It'll tell you right here on the side which ones to connect. So now I've got to connect up some voltage and see if my LEDs light up. And once we've got that test out of the way, then we'll be soldering in those last six and plugging in the other four and this board will be finished with that exception of that internet that bad just plugs on to and puts a zip tie on it so be right back as soon as i get a power supply here and get it connected up got ahead of myself got one last thing to do i put these other resistors in they go along this strip the double 32s and they'll fill up every hole so just start at one end, plug them in, and don't skip any holes. Now, as it said, some part numbers may change, but they'll all be eight identical parts, one left over here. Okay, now it's ready for power. Be right back. 
All right, well, let's test this thing now. What I have here for a power supply is an old computer power supply. And there's several videos online on how to convert one of these over to get your 3 volts, 12 volts, 5 volts, and a ground. So I'm using the 12 volt side here. I've got the red on the positive and this green one's on the negative. So if I place it on the positive here, and don't get them backwards, and then the negative on the opposite side, I light up the two top yellow lights. And if I go over here and touch the positive on the other side, I light up the bottom yellow light. So it passes that test, so now we're ready to go ahead and uh, solder in the rest of these ICs. Now to get the little IC here in, they tell you, put it on a hard surface, hold down on it, and roll it so that you move all six of them at once, and do that until they line up with the holes in the board. So I need a little more. Also on one end of this, there's a notch made into it, molded in. On the board, you can see that there's a notch on the right-hand end of each of these pictures. So you want to be sure that you put them in there with that notch on the right-hand end. And once you've got them lined up, they'll drop right in just like that. Solder them in. So I'm going to get these four soldered in, and then we'll be back. Get down to the last three parts. We've got one more socket here, wiring socket. Goes in up here, once again, just put it in the same way that the diagram shows. It goes here. Then we've got one little uh, chip, and once again, take a look where the notch is. It's on this end, and in the picture, the notch is on this end. So it goes here, and then we've got the big one. And you can see the notch is on the left side right there. And the notch in the picture is on the left side. All the rest of them are on the right. But this one's on the left. So don't get it mixed up with the rest of them. It goes in this way. So as soon as I get these soldered, I'll be right back. Hey, yeah, that's the last of the solder. Now we've got a few other parts here we have to put on. And remember that these ICs right here are the same story. You have to find the little notch in them. And that goes the direction of the notches. There it went in. Look it over and make sure none of the pins got out. Make sure you put it in the right way. Notch facing the right direction. That one went in easy enough. And there it is. Got the Ethernet connector. Pins all in. Snap her down. Put the zip tie on. Go from the bottom up. Back down.
pull it good and tight. Snip off the excess. And it's done. So now we have to connect it to the internet, give it an address, and test it.